Hey, it's Lucas over at Man Made, and we're going to kick off the Rockwell Unidrill Restoration Series with Part 1, which is going to be an overview of the drill itself, what makes it unique, how it works, and what my plans are for the restoration. So check it out. Okay, so this is a Rockwell Unidrill. What's unique about this, as opposed to a traditional drill press, is that there's an additional arm, an additional knuckle, right here, that allows you to have a lot more freedom of movement. So on a traditional drill press, the head is fixed on a column, and that column sits either on a base that's on a table or on the floor. And then you've got a drill press table. So with a fixed column, you have your work on the table, and you move your work to the drill. So you move your work on the table up and down, you reposition it, but the drill press head itself is fixed. So that's great for smaller parts, uh, but for bigger work or heavier work, you, uh, you would use something like a unidrill or a radial drill. And on machines like this, you actually fixture your work to the table, and then you move the drill itself to your work. So on a unidrill, you would fixture your work to this table, this a big 24 by 26 T-slot steel table. And then you would move your actual drill to your work. In order to be able to position it, you've got various movements that this can accomplish. So the drill press head can pivot off of its original column location here. So it can pivot off the unidrill arm and pivot 270 degrees this way, okay, and in addition to pivoting here in the center, the whole arm itself will pivot on the column. So as you can see, you can pivot like that, and then counter pivot, and that would allow you to position your, your drill to your work however you'd like. Another way it can move, in addition to pivoting in these two respects, is it can also rotate this way. And so I'm only going to pivot it a little bit because it's not secured down. But the idea is it can pivot side to side up to 45 degrees in either direction. So when you have this combined with this movement and combined with this movement, it really creates some very unique angles that you can work at, you can drill at in relation to your work surface. So another unique thing about it is the, the throat is the, the depth that it's able to work at. So a traditional drill press can have anywhere from 8 to 14 or 15 inches of, of working depth off of the throat. This has about 28 inches off of the column. So it has 28 inches of working depth and that's in addition to its being able to hit any spot on the table. Um, and then also this is the ability to move up and down. Crank back here that allows you to move the whole head up and down. And it's not just a traditional crank, it's actually a gearbox driven crank, so it's a pretty smooth up and down. The drill also has, it has quite a bit of a um, working depth on the quill. It has about a six inch quill. Between that and all the other motion, it does give you a lot of versatility. I've been looking for one of these drills for probably a few years, ever since I saw it in um, some pictures and then subsequently saw one in a friend of mine's shop and I had to have one. So I've been looking for one of these for a long time and the opportunity came up to buy one and uh, it's almost complete. It doesn't have the original cast iron base or legs um, and it's missing the stop nut on the depth right here, the depth stop. But other than that, it appears to be almost completely here and original. A few things that I'm really excited about on it is it has the original belt cover. A lot of times these are lost because they come off so easily, but it has the original belt cover that has the ability to, to pop up and just pivot. And originally this was done with springs, so we'll be rebuilding that feature. Um, it has all three handles on the quill, which I'm very excited about because a lot of these are missing one or missing two, or sometimes it's not even this hub, it's just a, a lever. So I'm excited that's here. It does have the original cutler hammer switch. It has an original, an original Rockwell motor on it. 
single phase, 125 volt, half horsepower, 17, 25 RPM. So it has that. Everything is functional, everything works. My plans for this drill are to pull it apart, give it a very good cleaning, very good de-rusting, and repaint. So these portions here will all be painted the original uh, sort of blue-gray. You can kind of see on this Delta Rockwell saw behind me. Um, the edge of the table will also get that same color. The belt cover, the base for the belt cover, and this hub here will get the, the lighter um, sort of warmish tan or warmish gray color that was original. Um, all the badging will be cleaned and saved. Uh, the motor will be cleaned and reinstalled. Everything will be greased. New bearings, new belt, new wiring. Nice cleaned up table. Uh, polish up the column. Polish all the uh, chrome and, and raw metal parts. And ultimately, while it will be looking for the original cast iron base for it, in the interim, my plan is to build a tube steel base out of three inch uh, square tube for this to live on um, for the time being. And, uh, and I'll mention too, I think this is very cool. I bought this drill up in New Hampshire and it's been there for who knows how long. Um, the extent of the story that I could get from it was that the guy that I bought it from, the couple that I bought it from, he had bought this years, years ago because he wanted a drill press and he'd remember that his grandfather had always had Rockwell tools. So he saw a Rockwell drill press and bought it. But ultimately his grandfather gave him his, his Rockwell drill press. So this just sat in the garage and eventually he sold it to me. But what I think is very neat is it was originally sold by Boschko Woodworking Machinery in Billerica, Mass, which is just a few miles from here. And Boschko is still in business today. So this is an actual metal nameplate riveted to the side of the head. So I think it's pretty neat that, you know, all those years ago, Boschko sold it, and who knows where it went, up in New Hampshire, who knows. But it's back just a few miles from where it was originally sold, and uh, I plan to have this thing for quite a long time. So make sure to follow along on Instagram at manmade and ma for smaller, more frequent updates, trials, tribulations, what's working, what went catastrophically wrong, whatever. And then subscribe here on YouTube, hit that subscribe button down below for longer form, more uh, periodic updates on the uh, various stages of this, like stripping it down, refinishing it, doing the electrical, doing the mechanical, building a base for it, and getting it all back together. Um, if you have one of these, let me know, because I only know two other people that have them, and given how unique and uncommon they are, I think it's pretty neat. So if you have one, let me know. If you have any questions, if you have any thoughts about it, or an experience with these particular Rockwell heads, let me know down in the comments. So thank you for watching, and look forward to keeping this restoration going and getting the finished product.